I'm glad you're here this month because we need all the help we can get to search for the world's most elusive and valuable treasure. Books have been written about it. Songs have been sung about it. Children cry for it. Well, maybe that last part isn't true. But does anyone know what I'm talking about? That's right. We're searching for wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. But why is wisdom so important? Why should we spend our time searching for it? Well, it be, it's because it's more valuable than anything in this world offers. That's what one of the wisest men who ever lived said, and his words are recorded in the Bible. Listen to what else the Bible says about wisdom. Choose my teaching instead of silver. Choose knowledge rather than fine gold. Proverbs 8:10. But how do we find wisdom? Where do we go to find such a valuable thing? Our Bible story gives us a clue, but first, we've got a fun game that I think will also give you a clue. First, I need everyone to choose a partner. The youngest person will sit on the floor. The oldest person will stand over them. The youngest person will need a paper plate and a marker. Now, all you have to do is draw the very best smiley face that you can on your paper plate. Not too hard, right? Well, there's a catch. There's always a catch, isn't there? You're going to place your paper plate on your head and draw the smiley face while the plate is on your head. But there is some good news. You'll have some help. Those of you who are standing, it's your job to help your partner draw the best smiley face ever. You can't touch the marker or the plate, but using your vantage point, you can instruct your partner on the best places to draw, like where to move his hand to draw the eyes or where she should start drawing the mouth. Give the best instructions you can because your teammate is depending on you. Okay, artists, you have 30 seconds to draw your best smiley face. Plates on your heads, but markers by your sides until I say go. Three, two, one, go. Time's up. Put your markers down and take a look. Wow, you guys did great. But you may be wondering what in the world smiley face drawing has to do with wisdom. Well, I'm not going to tell you. But let's move on to our Bible story and maybe things will be a little clearer. Last week, we learned how Solomon became king of Israel when he was very young. But when God offered him anything he wanted, Solomon asked for wisdom. So King Solomon went on to become one of the wisest men who ever lived. But King Solomon didn't always follow the wisdom God gave him. Toward the end of his life, he chose not to listen to God's wisdom. So God allowed enemies to come against the kingdom, both from inside and out. Plus, King Solomon didn't rule God's people the way God wanted him to. He was harsh and forced the people to work very hard. By the time Solomon's son, Rehoboam, became king, many of the Israelites were very unhappy with their lives. One day, a group of Israelites, led by a man named Jeroboam, came to see Rehoboam. Jeroboam and the Israelites had an important message for Rehoboam. They told the king that his father had been really hard on them. They asked him to make their work easier to lighten their load. They promised him that if he would do that, they would serve him willingly. But Rehoboam was new at this whole king thing and he wasn't ready to answer Jer Jeroboam and the Israelites right away. He told them to go away for three days and then come back to him. So for three days, the Israelites waited and waited and waited. In the meantime, 
Rehoboam remembered that his father had sought the advice of the elders whenever he had a hard decision to make. Rehoboam decided that that was a good place to start, so he called the elders to him. Rehoboam explained the situation to the elders and asked them what they thought. Let's see what the Bible says the elders said to Rehoboam. 1 Kings 12.7 They replied, Serve them today. Give them what they are asking for. Then they'll always serve you. That sounds like pretty good advice, doesn't it? After all, there were a lot of Israelites, and as new king, it would probably be wise to make them happy. But Rehoboam didn't like what the elders had to say, so he decided to go to some other people to see if they had different advice. He went to his friends, the group of guys he had grown up with. Rehoboam told his friends the same story he had told the elders, but his friends had some very different advice. 1 Kings 12, 10 through 11. They replied, These people have said to you, Your father put a heavy load on your shoulders, make it lighter. Now tell them, My little finger is stronger than my father's leg. My father put a heavy load on your shoulders, but I will make it even heavier. My father beat you with whips, I'll beat you with bigger whips. Wow. Rehoboam had to decide between two very different pieces of advice, didn't he? On the one hand, he had the elders the men who his father, King Solomon, trusted to advise him. These men had years of experience helping the king. But then he had his friends, his buddies, the guys he grew up with. They didn't exactly know what they were talking about, but they were his friends. Before he knew it, the three days were up and Jeroboam and the Israelites returned as he had told them to. Rehoboam had to tell them his decision. Unfortunately, the Bible tells us that Rehoboam listened to his friends. Listen to what the Bible says Rehoboam told the Israelites. 1 Kings 12:14. He said, My father put a heavy load on your shoulders, but I'll make it even heavier. My father beat you with whips, but I'll beat you with bigger whips. What terrible news for the Israelites. The story doesn't end there, though. Unfortunately for Rehoboam, the Israelites weren't exactly thrilled with the advice Rehoboam took from his friends. In fact, it made them angry. So the Israelites chose Jeroboam to be their new king instead. Most of the twelve tribes of Israel chose to follow him. Only a couple of the tribes of Israel continued to follow Rehoboam as their king. The nation was split in two parts, all because Rehoboam chose to ignore the wise advice of his father's counselors and listen to his foolish friends instead. Rehoboam had to learn the hard way, but you and I can learn something very valuable from his mistake. If you want to be wise, hang out with wise people. Rehoboam was highly influenced by the opinions of the people he spent time with, his old buddies. The problem is his friends weren't wise. They didn't give him wise advice. If he had taken the advice of the wise people, the elders who advised his father, there's a really good chance he could have prevented the nation of Israel from dividing. Just like Rehoboam, you and I are very influenced by the people we spend time with. And God wants our relationships to build us up, to lead us to make the wise choice. That means that who you spend time with is really, really important. King Solomon had a proverb. In Proverbs 13:20, he said, Walk with wise people and become wise. A companion of foolish people suffers harm. That means if we want to become wise, we should find someone who is wiser than we are to spend time with. You guys know the difference between someone who makes wise decisions and someone who doesn't. When you surround yourself with foolish people, you'll end up doing foolish things. If you surround yourself with people who gossip, you'll likely end up gossiping. If you're around people who are angry, you'll likely be angry. And when you're with people who break the rules, yep, you know what's going to happen. But if you choose wise people to be your friends, if you choose someone who's wise to be your mentor, your teacher, or someone you can learn from, then over time, you're going to be wise. So, the one thing to remember today is, if you want to be wise, hang out with wise people. Say that with me on the count of three. 
one, two, three. If you want to be wise, hang out with wise people. Ask God to help you find wise people in your life. God wants you to have wisdom, and he can use other people to show you the way. Some of you are struggling to draw the smiley face on your paper plate. But when you listen to the advice of the wise people standing above you, you could see exactly what you were doing. You made the right moves, and your smiley face turned out a lot better than it would have otherwise. So find yourself some wise friends, and listen to what they say. Let's ask God to help us surround ourselves with wise people right now. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us friends and family so we don't have to go through this life alone. But we know that not everyone spends time making wise decisions. So help us to spend most of our time with the people who follow you and make wise decisions because of it. We want to be wise, so help us choose wise friends. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now take a few moments to talk about these things with whoever you're watching with today.